Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Phil Rowley. Today we're coming to you from the shores of Pigeon Lake, a fantastic walleye fishery located about an hour southwest of Edmonton. We're joined by local walleye expert Alex Kreiss and we're going to introduce you to Walleye on the Fly. This is going to be an exciting show. I know you're going to learn a lot. On today's show, the new Fly Fisher crew is chasing walleye on Pigeon Lake, located roughly 40 miles southwest of Edmonton. Pigeon is named due to the large flocks of passenger pigeons that used to range over the area. It is a large, popular, easily accessible recreational lake featuring a number of resort communities and thousands of summer homes and cottages. A rich body of water, Pigeon is home to northern pike, perch, lake whitefish, walleye, burbot and a variety of minnows. Invertebrates also inhabit the lake, including leeches, scuds, caddis, chironomids, and mayflies such as the large Hexagena lumbata. Many of these prey items feature prominently in the diet of Pigeon's resident walleye. Pigeon Lake is rich in structure for fly fishers to explore, including weed beds, shoals, drop-offs, rock piles, and sunken islands. Joining me today is Alex Kreis, a former television host with a wealth of Alberta fishing experience. Alex is an expert angler and his specialty is walleye. Together we're going to show you how easy it is to adapt spin fishing techniques to fly fishing and be successful. you really want to utilize when you're out fishing bigger lakes like Pigeon or any lake you haven't been to for that matter is really use your sonar. There's a bunch of things you can learn off your sonar. Watch it carefully while you're driving. You'll see transitions that you wouldn't have otherwise found. Um, you can mark those spots with your GPS and always come back to them. We were just traveling along about 24 feet and I seen it quickly come up. Came into about 15 feet of water didn't mark any fish so we're probably going to move on from here but it's a good idea to run a lake first watch your sonar watch for the transitions and if you see arches in those transitions bonus you're into the fish fish on there we go got a nice little walleye on here coming up to the surface and again I just felt that tightening in the line as though it was dragging through weeds any sensation of something different you raise the hook you're not gonna feel an arm jarring strike like you might with a pike on the fly or a rainbow trout or other they're very uh, finesse fish so we'll just bring this fish right in here and let you have a look at it and that white streamer been a very good pattern for me over the years And there you go. They're very fly, very hand friendly. Sit there. You got to be careful. There's some uh, they're gill plates. They have spines. And you can see, if you look down Main Street, nice little set of teeth in there. So there you go. Walleye can be taken on the fly and with consistent success. So we'll just let that one go. <laughs> They are wiggly too, so but they're fun. Let's go get another one. When I first started trying to catch walleye on the fly, there wasn't a lot of information in traditional fly fishing circles. I had to get out of the box, look at how traditional methods were used, slip bobbers, things like this, and match my tackle and presentation. Alex and I are going to go through some of that with you so you can do this yourself. First one I'm going to show you here is a Lindy rig. Basically consists of a hook or a floating jig and a weight that keeps it on the bottom and the hook on the end that 
the leech can swim away with or do whatever. Well, we can do that. I've got a fast sinking type six line in this case, a short three to four foot leader. And I just tie on a floating fly, a gurgler in this case. This fly will suspend above the bottom and that foam head will waddle it along. So there's my Lindy rig equivalent. The second is the old standby jig technique. Um, everything from a short shank jig that you can use with a minnow to a rubber body jig. This one actually looks like a shiner and has a little bit of scent to it as well. How we do that with a fly rod is just use a traditional sinking line of varying density. This happens to be a streamer express, but we use clear intermediates. And just your traditional streamers like a like a marabou, sorry, a, a kiwi muddler here, or a clouser minnow, which with these barbell eyes jigs up and down just like a walleye fisherman's jig. And then of course, everybody's favorite, especially with kids, the old slip bobber. A little jig on the bottom and a sliding bobber that'll eventually hit the stop and keep it suspended just off the bottom right in the strike zone. And that's deadly easy for us fly fishermen. Your traditional floating line, strike indicator, and a leech fly. Bounces up and down, deadly on walleye, especially in eight to 10 feet of water. So there you have it. It's not that hard to catch walleye on the fly. Get out of the box a bit, see what other anglers are doing, match your tackle and your presentation. You can catch walleye on the fly as well. fish will literally rub bellies with the bottom some days and they have a very small strike zone you really want to put it right in front of their face as much as possible and you always have to be keep in mind how a walleye eats is how you have to feel for the bite um, what they'll do is they'll approach a bait and they'll literally open their mouth real fast and suck in a big gulp of water the bait goes in and usually a little tick you feel as the line actually hitting the lip. Then they'll close down on it and they feel something's not right, they'll spit it out just as fast. And that would be a bottom bite. There we go. We got ourselves another walleye. This white streamer seems to be the ticket for them. And again, we're using a slow four to six inch pull. Pull, pause, pull, pause and then all of a sudden it's just a weighty sensation and then set the hook into them. You're not going to feel an arm jarring strike, just a sensation that something not right with the fly. Set the hook and then it kind of lights into the action. So there's another nice Pigeon Lake walleye. Just a fantastic fishery that's less, it's approximately an hour southwest of Edmonton. Just incredible. Go to the mall and get walleye all in the same day. <laughs> I'll just pick this guy up. And they got a skin that feels like 80 grit sandpaper. Again, be careful of these spines. And the ones off the gill plates too. And of course, don't put your fingers in their mouth. So we'll just back that fly out. There we go. And there's a beautiful pigeon like walleye. We'll just put him in the water. And off he goes. A little wiser. Stay away from the white flies. You're going to find walleye in the fall typically looking for the young of the year. So you got to keep in mind that the fish that have hatched out in the spring, all of those minnows are starting to get larger now. So they're going to be looking for the big food such as the whitefish minnows, um, pike, whatever. So they're going to look for that stuff. Whitefish are going to start gathering up on mid lake humps. Uh, it's getting into the fall now where they're going to go into a spawning cycle. Walleye of course spawn in the spring. So right now their main objective is get fat for the winter. So they're gonna look for those bigger meals. So what you wanna do is work with stuff that's big and healthy meals. What Alex has done is thrown out an orange marker buoy. These big lakes, a GPS, a simple handheld unit like this, you can locate these humps, mark them if they're a new hump, throw that marker buoy out so you know where the hump is and you can patrol and work the boat around those to find a walleye. Just like trout, they're very structure orientated and the key is finding the structure, you should find the walleye. There we go. And I just altered my cast a little bit. I've actually lost a couple of flies casting onto the hump. And uh, it's a rocky hump, so it's a bit of a fly grabber. So I uh, re-rigged, put the white streamer on again, and just went off. And got another beautiful pigeon-like walleye on here. And it looks like he's taken that fly quite well down. So I'm going to have to perhaps get the forceps to get this fly up. No, it's just inside. Hold on. 
There we go, and just cradle them. Watch out for those spines. And I'm gonna get the forceps. So he's taken this one down, you can see the fly. No damage, it's barbless hooks, all barbless regulations here. And there you go, just a characteristic white tip of the tail. True walleye sign. Remember the perch family, fun fish on the flat rod. So this looks representative of a minnow. We've got a recessed cone here with uh, red eyes in I've affixed. And the marabou in front, when this fly goes through the water, when I strip it, it goes all narrow. And when I pause, it opens up and shows its shiny inner self. And I put a little bit of red um, crystal chenille in there too to suggest gills. And this fly pulses and breathes through the water. It's got lots of great action. Fish it nice and slow, very effective. And as always with everyone, I'm still water fishing the non-slip loop knot for maximum fly movement. So we'll throw that in and go get another one. Yes, Phil seems to be getting him on a straight white clouser. So far I've been working with this green, well, chartreuse and white clouser minnow with a really healthy set of eyes. It's nice when you do have a set of eyes because the predator species, whether it's pike, trout, walleye, doesn't matter. They're gonna focus on the eyes because they always wanna strike the head first. And with a short hook like that, it's not going to matter that the tail runs quite a ways behind it because if they attack that head, they've got the hook right away. But this color is not working, so we're going to change up and try something a little brighter and whiter. Oh, yes. Fish on. Let's try to take up some line so I can actually fight it on the reel a bit. Just in case. But same time keeping pressure on the fish if it starts to come up because all they need is that little bit of slack and they will be gone all right yes it is a good walleye well i'm gonna have to swing it around and get further to the back of the boat because it's a fairly deep boat and trying to land a fish up here would be a challenge so Watch my anchor rope. Just gotta be aware of your surroundings when you're fighting a fish. Just need to get over here. Perfect. Now, get a handle on this fish. Beautiful Pigeon Lake walleye. Changed up to the white clouser, and that seemed to do the trick. Yeah, that's your typical size in here, an average fish, probably a couple of pounds. It's nice to see several year classes in a lake like this. Just let that fella go. Yeah, what you wanna see is a lot of different year classes. You wanna see everything from little guys right up to the big hog, 10, 12 pounders. Then you know you're starting to get a stable fishery, and sooner or later, they'll be able to open up a little bit more and might be able to keep a few. Right now in Pigeon Lake, you're allowed to actually apply for a draw system to keep a walleye, but today all we're doing is having a little fun with them. I've just made a cast. I'm using a clear intermediate line. It sinks at about two inches per second. I'm using my watch to time the fly and accurately count it down. So I'm gonna let it sink about 30 seconds. I'm gonna take a bit of experimentation to find whether they're, the walleye are close to the bottom uh, or up a little more in the water column. Once we get it timed in and dialed in, we should be into some pretty steady fish, if they're here, of course. There is so many good places to fish for walleye in Alberta. You've got Crawling Valley close to Calgary loaded with walleye. You've got Pigeon Lake situated very close to Edmonton. Sylvan Lake starting to produce some really good walleyes as well. Pine Lake, um, you go into the Lac La Biche area and there are literally a fish, a, a lake a day situation. Spend a couple weeks up there and you'll be fishing a different lake every day. And they're all loaded with fish. So what I'm using here is a slow four to six inch strip. 
and every time I strip the fly line, it goes straight, and when I relax my strip, the fly line gets recoiled. Watch that line, because sometimes you'll strip, the line will bunch like this, and then instantly, it'll go straight again. That's a walleye has grabbed your fly, raised the rod, set the hook. They can be very subtle strikers. We've got a, another Pigeon Lake walleye on here, and what we're using is the clear intermediate lines and a white streamer, and it's the it's kind of a hybrid between a, a, what a, a traditional crankbait or um, a jig, because the fly moves horizontally but yet has that pitching jigging action. And uh, this fish should, or I think it was this fish, or perhaps another one. Usually, when you find one, they're quite schooly. You'll get a bunch together. I'd had a number of takes, a couple of and it was gone, and we get tight, and was gone, and this guy finally landed into it, and you can see he really wanted it, which makes me think that perhaps I was stripping it out of his mouth, and uh, he uh, came back with a vengeance and really didn't like his lunch running away from him. Last view of a shiner or a perch. <laughs> so we'll just reach in there, and these barbless hooks, the flies come out very easily. And beautiful look. That's a juvenile. That's a sign of a good, healthy fishery. We're getting a, a lot of different size classes here, which means this fishery is thriving. Unbelievable, so close to Edmonton. We'll put him back and go get some more. Just support him, give him a drink, let him go back down. You gotta try this walleye fishing on the fly here in Alberta or any other place there's walleye. But pigeon here, this is the place to cut your teeth on, that's for sure. flies is simple. A good cross-section of streamer patterns will do. Here we've got a floating minnow for use on a fast sinking line, Lindy rig style. A bead headed sparkle leech which works great under a strike indicator, slip bobber style. The venerable clouser minnow that can be tied in a host of bait fish colors is a great jig pattern. Good old woolly bugger in a host of different colors. This is an Easter egg bugger with yellow tail, yellow hackle. And this is a simple streamer pattern using glow-in-the-dark flashaboo. And you can really light these flies up with a simple UV light. These are great flies to fish in low light conditions or at depth. Today's top fly was a white popsicle leech. Here is the tying recipe. Once wet, the red crystal chenille glows through the marabou collar. This white popsicle leech has become one of my favorite walleye patterns. <laughs> We've got another walleye on here. This one feels a little bigger, and he belted that. And he, I'm going to steer him around a bit. Yeah, this one, water magnifies him a bit, but uh, this one looks to be a good, healthy size. And this one was a little more aggressive on his take. He came up and you see I got him right in the tip of the snout. Oh, and he's pulled out. Again, that's a, it's almost as though that walleye had grabbed the fly and just as it was leaving the mouth, I sensed him and set into it. And that's why I stuck him right in the upper lip. It's almost the same way a trout takes a coronament or a midge. Just as it's going out, you sense the take and you strike, driving that hook up in there. So if it's buried in there, good. It can be a great hook set, but that guy threw it. But they're starting to turn on. So I'm gonna throw that fly out there again and take another one. There we go. Oh, this, this one's pulled some line. It feels like it's got some shoulders. Now, there's always a chance in these walleye lakes that you can uh, run into the, the big, long, green things. Uh, but no, this is definitely a walleye. And uh, this one looks a little bigger than the last one we took, that's for sure. You can see that white. Holy, there's oh. a big pike. Look at the pike down here. We have a big pike follow this walleye up. Wow, <laughs> that was a good sized pike that came up to see what this walleye was all about. And that can often happen. There's a pike is a huge predator of the walleye and that was a good sized pike. There's that all white streamer again. And again, you could use marabou muddlers. Any all white streamer seems to be working here today. So look at that, that's a, that's a nice sized walleye. Well, <laughs> 
and he didn't like to, uh, I guess he doesn't want to be on camera and probably scared to death between being dragged around and that big pike following up. So we'll go get another one. All right, walleye on. Well, I gotta say this, fishing for walleye on the fly is a heck of a lot of fun. It takes some persistence in honing your technique. Of course, I'm used to a little more hardware, but once you get the technique down, and this time all I did was resort to almost a vertical jigging technique with a fly, believe it or not. I literally let the line drag along the bottom. We have a very, very slow drift going here, even though there isn't much wind. And all I did was just, every once in a while, just twitch it up, and sure enough, feel this little tap tap, and there's a fish on the end of the line. Just what we want. Let's see if we can reach down and catch this fella. There we go. It's got it down there a little bit. A little bit deep, but that's just the nature of how the fish takes the bait. Beautiful walleye. Beautiful walleye. Look at the fins. You really want to watch those. Those are sharp. And this edge along here, like a serrated knife. You could actually take that and cut. You don't want to grab a fish here. That is extremely sharp. Let's just put this girl back into the water. All right. Oh yeah, this, this feels pretty solid. Maybe it's a fish with a little bit of shoulders on it. Oh yeah, this one's holding down pretty good. Usually when they do that, you know you've got a decent one. Big walleyes will tend to just bulldog and hold you down deep. Some head shakes, well, it's not as big as I'd like it to be, but a walleye nonetheless. Oh yeah, he's a little better. Maybe I can pass this back to you to grab there, Phil. Sure. Teamwork, I'm a little high up in the front of the bow here. No, no problem at all. Happy to take him, look at that, right in the snout. Well done, Alex. Look at that, a beautiful Pigeon Lake walleye. You see, walleye on the fly, it can be done. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you learned a lot about how to catch walleye on the fly and just how easy it can be. For more information on this and other shows in our informative series, please visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Looking for world-class fishing at reasonable prices? Want the best of bass, brook trout, pike, and walleye fishing that is easily accessible? Then come to the Algoma region in Northern Ontario. Easy to access by road, plane, or even train, Algoma features some of the best fishing in the world. To learn more, go to algomaregion.com or call toll-free 1-800-263-2546.